Thing only rev to 4,000 RPMs? Yeah, it's a diesel, Mark. We're setting off in the all new 2020 Ram Ego Diesel. We're in Duluth, and you promised you'd also take me on a fishing trip. Well, that's what I told our significant others <laughs> that uh, me and Jack Twist were gonna go up to the mountains on a fishing trip, and little did they know we're at an FCA retreat. Which is better than you being big smooth. It is. Jack, nasty. You didn't go up there. To so, the Ram is not the big story here, even though, you know, everybody wants to make the Ram the big story. And what we have is their brand new engine design from Italy, their FCA division in Italy. It's exotic. It is exotic. This is their third generation diesel. And we had an opportunity to talk to the chief engineer about all the work that he's put in and his team. So let's take a look at that interview. Good morning. I'm Mauro Puglia, I'm Diesel Engine Chief Engineer at FCA. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We are here at the Ram Eco Diesel launch. This is the third generation motor in this design, and this is kind of your, your baby. Yeah, we can say, we could call it this way. It's my baby, or baby, let's say, of the team I have the pleasure to work with. And how long was the development cycle? How long did it take you to develop this? Well, we can say around four or five years. Four okay. or five years. Okay. Wow, that's a long time. It's a long time and it's a brand new engine. So we're not talking just a, a facelifting face lift of the generation two. It is really a brand new engine. So in terms of the, so you have a lot of engine offerings for this truck. You have, you have the V6, you have this now, um, and this is vastly, I mean, you, you mentioned this during the presentation that you didn't think you were going to be able to do this based on the NVH requirements, the fuel efficiency requirements. Yes. Um, and why did you think that was going to be so difficult? Well, it, is, it was difficult for, for this reason, because we had to combine all the three, uh, all the three goals, so which in some cases are contradicting. I mean, we, we had to increase the, uh, the torque of more, more than 14%, 14 and, um, and the power too, 20 horsepower more. And uh, doing that, we were requested to, to highly improve uh, the fuel economy and the MBH. The MBH has to be better. So normally, it's very difficult to combine a so huge performance increase to a strong fuel economy improvement. So this, uh, this is the reason why I mean, we really had to optimize every single, every single component. I and mean, we couldn't um, make, as I said before, if a generation two facelift. We really had to design 70, 80% of the, all the components, of the engine components. From an engine design or a mechanical engineering design, what are the most contradictory parts of it? Because obviously you have to control emissions, you're increasing output. Well, I'm, I think that it's in general, we use as engineer the word trade-off. So trade-off uh, uh, trade between emission fuel economy and VH means the best compromise to find the best compromise in, in any component, and including the calibration. So harder component and the calibration. I think that uh, so there, there's no contradiction. Everything is, is a is a is a um, the, the, the most difficult part of the story to find a good compromise among these three uh, requirements. You figure out a way to balance all yeah. the things out that you yeah. wanted to do. Yeah, it's a compromise. I mean that you could achieve more, maybe more torque with lower fuel, like, with, with worsening the fuel economy or worsening the MVH. No, we were able to 
to, to, to hit the, the best-in-class uh, torque with an excellent fuel economy, excellent improvement compared with the, with the, for, with the former generation, and imp also improve the MVH. This is what was really tough. Okay. Is there something very specific that you would point out that's interesting about this motor that you could tell somebody from a mechanical standpoint? Well, um, that's like differentiates it more from. I think I, I think we already mentioned the, all the key the, the, the key components. So what we didn't say is all the other components that have been changed. It's the the, the all the covers are different. Uh, we implemented changes to improve, for example, the serviceability of the parts. We improved changes to to make it easier to to manufacture. All these changes are not mentioned, but they are in. But they're important. And they are important, and they are in. And they, Serviceability, you mentioned that. Yeah. How much of a factor was that in terms of overall design? I mean, obviously you have to get it through the plant flow, you have to get it through the manufacturing process efficiently. Well, we, I remember that at the beginning of the project, uh, we arranged the workshop with our service, uh, service guys. We turned down an engine, they study every single component, they thought about the generation two um, problems, or so say opportunity, opportunities, opportunity of improvement, uh, based on the feedback received from the dealers. Uh, so we created a list of ideas, uh, and we implemented all these ideas uh, in, in this, in this, say the majority of these ideas uh, in, in generation three. So we tried really to to cover uh, parts, of the, um, aspects that are not mentioned, but they are important. So here's my takeaway with the Ram. Eco Diesel. This engine fits the character of this truck better better than any of the, the other power plants. And I mean, sure, that's my my opinion, but here's why: it gets the best fuel economy, it tows the most, and it's entirely non-invasive. Yes, it's a little clattery, but unlike the, the gas engine, it's effortless in the way it accelerates. It's not as fast, but around town, I never feel like I need to wind this thing out. See, I I get that. And I, I think what they explained to us is that the serious truck drivers that use the vehicle- Making business deals. Making business <laughs> transactions and towing, and the people that literally use this for its intended utility purpose will buy diesels. But for me, I feel like, yeah, you got a ton of torque, but it's not the most enjoyable on the street. I would give me a V8. Give me a V8 in a truck because I like the character of it. I get that, but we've taken this off-road. Yes. And it's very capable off-road. The torque and the power band curve, and this is perfect for that. We've towed a boat with it, and you looked exotic. And we've now spent all, over 50 miles on the highway, and I've you know, turned over almost 25 miles to the gallon. Yeah, that's, it's really impressive, but I gotta tell you one thing, not having a V8 in here, when I'm in the V8, my testosterone levels raise so high that it seeps through my pores and burns through my shirt. And I don't <laughs> do that in here, I can't, I don't have that level of street credit. So, the, the big takeaways was FCA wanted, wanted a better diesel, and they had a couple criteria. They wanted lower NVH, they wanted better fuel economy and more torque. And they've achieved all that. And the chief engineer is like, well, that's kind of hard to do because there's so many trade-offs of doing that. You lower horsepower and torque because you have to get reduced emissions. So you've got to deal with all this. So when we looked at uh, the low pressure EGR, the new coatings on the piston rings, the new piston design, the piston pins, the new block, the new head, I mean, basically the engine is 80% new and most of it was about friction reduction. Yeah, reducing parasitic losses. Yes, and with the transmission, it's really the same tra transmission reprogram for lower shift points, but all of these things they had to do and this is kind of the future. So whether, no matter which option you choose, you can have this diesel in any single Ram model coming up. So you can get in the Rebel, the Limited, whatever, the Tradesman. So that is a huge benefit. Now, you know, we could argue all day what the best truck is, and I think trucks in America, truck brands and loyalty is a religion. People will, will get it, and they will say their truck's the best no matter what. Like, if you're a Chevy guy or a Chevy boy, you get a Silverado, and even when Chevy denies your warranty at 60,000.1 <laughs> miles because you have a cylinder deactivation issue and your engine blew up, 
you'll still get another Silverado. And that's just how it is. No, if, so, you're, if you're a Ford guy, you're a Ford guy. Right. If you're a Ram guy, you're a Ram guy. And if you like Chevys, you'll like Chevys. But there's so many good things with this Ram. And I'm not just saying it because we're on a press event. It, we, we, t we just got out of the Levante and we got out of the Red Eye. Our big problem with both those is... Well, the interior was garbage the, well, in both of those cars. The Levante it wasn't garbage, but it wasn't indicative of the price point. It's not a $130,000 interior. But when you're in this truck, you're like, oh, FCA knows how to yes. make an interior. Th this is really... And granted, it's truckish because it's supposed to be... Uh, but just take a look at the finer details. The trim pieces along the center stack, the kind of brushed metal finish that goes into this pinstriping, the leather material with the stitching doesn't look generic it, it i mean it's very machine done but even the piping and the dash the plastics they don't look like it doesn't look like every single piece somebody was like penny binging like oh yeah, we, 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 yeah, we got to cut costs everywhere that wasn't the way this is now there there's some crap like they talk about how oh it's an industry disruptor to have <laughs> this like 50 inch plasma in your dash and i think it's a, it's a it's a disruptor of my attention on the road because there is so much here. It's ridiculous. But if you're somebody that doesn't mind it, you know, it does. it is functional. If you're looking for a truck that is quiet, you can do your business deals. Yes. You like high-end interiors and you want this like cocoon of silence, this is the best truck for you. It is, and there, there's a lot Reliability of Reliability well, concerns yeah. aside. Well, yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we can't really address that at this point. But you have acoustic laminated front windshield, side glass in the front. You have independent rear suspension in the back with coil springs that are progressively sprung. So, so it rides well unloaded and loaded. loaded. Yep, you have an air suspension option, which this has, which helps on the highway to lower itself for better aerodynamic, less drag. It helps you off-road, which we did. And surprisingly, it was super comfortable. Even when you did stupid things, like you shouldn't be going as fast as I you never were. drive like a chimpanzee. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> I, this is the most refined truck experience I've ever had. Ever, I've, this is the most refined truck ever I've been in. The side cargo areas are useful. I mean, my only negative with this truck is compared to Ford and Chevy, the body structure is not as advanced and that's my my one takeaway is yeah they did they took a lot of the investment and put it in the interior versus the actual structure of the right. vehicle i mean there's still high strength steel and all that and they used aluminum hood and tailgate but yeah you don't have an aluminum frame here but you don't notice it driving now whether you it, again this is your decision take a look at this see what it's like get it out on the road and compare it against other trucks at least try it you know and then you know if you're still a chevy boy you're a chevy boy <laughs> I know you're a Chevy boy. I you am. like that Chevy Trax Redline Edition. Oh, that's what I'm buying right after this. I can't wait to get back in my Trax. Savage geese. What a waste of skin. Man, we got to get rid of this guy. I'm going to show you how, but first, let's tune this Subaru. I think 60 PSI should be good. Yeah. Let's do it! 